Lifting up rocks and finding stoneflies is always a positive sign on the stream. These big crawly critters can induce strikes springtime, summertime, wintertime, anytime. This is the barbershop stone. Here's how you tie it. Starts off with a Daiichi 1760 hook. This is a size 12. We're also going to need a gold bead to fit. Feel free to use nickel or copper as well. Always pinch the barb on your hook before sliding the bead onto the shank. Secure the hook into the jaws of your vise and then add a dab of super glue just behind the bead to secure some wire for the thorax. I'm using 0.20 wire and I'm just going to wrap it onto the hook and then push it onto that super glue and then finish wrapping rearward to bolster that thorax just a little bit. The next step is a little bit unique, something that I really like to do on my nymph patterns, and I'm gonna add some mono eyes. Now, they sell pre-made mono eyes, but I like to make my own that fit much better. To do this, I use 20 pound monofilament, cut a piece of mono that's about an inch long, and hold it in the center with, a, with some good pliers and then singe either side all the way up to the pliers. Blow it out with your breath uh, to stop the, the flame, and then color those eyes in with a Sharpie to make them whatever color you need for your nymph pattern. Attach the mono eyes just behind the bead, just like you would a set of dumbbell eyes. If you capture wraps in front, bring the thread back over the top a few times, and then do some securing figure eight wraps to hold it into place. Then bring your thread all the way back to the bend for the next step. Stoneflies have a very prominent posterior, very prominent tail portion of their of their body. So I'm going to tie in two goose biots, brown goose biots on the on the back. Keep them fairly short. I like to tie them in individually to make sure they're splayed out properly. Tie one on the front side of the hook, and then uh, capture the rest of the biot down onto the hook shank before bringing the other biot to the back side of the hook and securing it in the same fashion. The barbershop stone namesake is the midge lace that makes up the body. Now I'm gonna to put together three different colors and you can vary these colors depending upon the color of the nymphs you're finding in your, your body of water. These are relatively light colored nymphs that I'll be fishing so I'm gonna use copper, amber, and light olive and just tie in the string of three together. As you're tying that midge lace trifecta in, Really pull that material back as you're tying it down to try and taper that body a little bit. And your wraps by the tail uh, on the back side of the, of the hook. That will ensure proper segmentation as you're wrapping it forward. Grab some plunger style hackle pliers and grab onto the three strands of midge lace and twist it up almost like you're creating a barber shop pole. Those old fashioned things that you probably never see anymore and then twist it all together. Pull very tightly as you make those first initial wraps just to try and taper that body a little bit. And then you can loosen your uh, tension as you bring that body material forward to create a really elegant, segmented, colorful body of this stonefly. Touching wraps all the way to the middle of the hook shank where you left your thread. Secure the midge lace and trim the excess and then clean up that section a little bit before we tie in our wing case. For that, we're gonna use one of my favorite materials for wing cases, natural pheasant tail fibers. Cut a fairly large section of fibers uh, to cover this wing case. I like to spread the fibers out a little bit as well to uh, increase the modeling and to break up those, those barred dark lines that exist within the pheasant tail just to make it more of a natural look. So tie the wing case in on top of the hook shank, ensuring that it's going to cover the entire top of the hook when you fold it over. And if it doesn't, go ahead and add more pheasant tail fibers or cut a larger section of pheasant tail for the wing case. Another prominent feature in these stoneflies are their big long legs. They are very leggy bugs. And for bug legs, I've really gravitated towards super floss. It's a very durable, stretchy material. So cut three two inch sections of super floss, bonefish tan super floss, and have them ready as you tie. We're going to tie in 
super floss legs, and then we're going to tie in some dubbing around each section. Capture it on top of the hook and then straighten those legs out, orient them however you'd like before adding more securing wraps and, and a few figure eights to make sure those legs stay in place. For the thorax, I'm gonna combine two different materials, Salmo Supreme Pheasant Crest dubbing and also Firestar Brassy dubbing. So just take a small clump from each package and mix them together by pulling the materials apart and stacking them on top of each other again, continuing to do so until all of the materials are thoroughly mixed. And then just pull a small clump from that patch and we're gonna tie it in in sections. So every time I tie in some legs, I'm gonna go ahead and create a noodle of this dubbing and secure it around the legs that I just tied. So I tied in the back section of legs under this stone fly. I'm gonna go ahead and work this dubbing around the back side and then eventually over the top and around the front uh, to secure those legs into place and to begin making a buggy very thick prominent thorax on this stone fly. Go ahead and repeat that process in the middle section with another small piece of super floss and then continuing on with some more dubbing to cover that section and then one final set of legs either behind or in front of the eyes and then once you get that last set of legs tied in um, bring the wing case over the top first and secure it in front of the eyes and then once you trim those excess pheasant tail fibers go ahead and dub your last noodle of pheasant crest and, and brassy fire star and cover up the back side of the eyes and the the front side where you trimmed your wing case you can finally whip finish and trim your thread and then pull your legs straight up and you can trim them all together to make them even length or you can trim them individually whichever works best for you one final thing that i like to do it's not necessary i like to add just a little bit of color for my own personal preference the fish don't care one way or another Hope you give this stonefly pattern a tie, and I hope you vary the colors and try them out on your home waters. Hope it catches some fish for you. These are all the materials you'll need to tie the barbershop stone. Go down to your local fly shop and ask for larva lace by name. If they don't have it, let them know. They can go to hagginsfish.com or they can call Lori at the shop to get the best high quality synthetics on the market. Made in the USA in Mitchell, South Dakota, these fly tying materials are the best around. We share a lot of our creations and a lot of our fishing experiences on the Fly Tying University Facebook page. It's a growing community for all fly tires. And we're a proud partner of the Fish Stories Archive, where angler voices are preserved for future generations. If you're new to the Larva Lace Fly Tying channel, please hit subscribe and ring that bell for future notifications. And we'd really appreciate it if you share this with your networks to let people know about all the great content we're providing and trying to help people become better fly fishers and better fly tires. Thanks for being a part of the Larva Lace community. Tight lines and well-tied flies.